Welcome. I am known as D-Man. D-Man, the computer man. Today being the first video in a series of computer related information and tutorial videos. I would like to go through and unbox some of these items that are used to build a computer. So please, if you like slow and boring videos, please continue to watch. If you do not like slow and boring videos, please turn off now and watch another video. Okay, for those that are going to continue, today we're going to talk about building a gaming computer. So, some people like to play games on computers. D-Man is one of them. And depending on the performance that you would like in the game will depend on how much money you would like to spend. So, some people in the pursuit of frames per second in a game will spend a reasonable amount of money. Some people will spend a large amount of money. And for those people, I would refer to as the elite. The elite pursue a no compromise gaming system. And they are defined by the amount of money that they spend on a computer system. I would define the amount of money they spend as ludicrous. Today, we will go through the items for someone who would spend an obscene amount of money in the pursuit of frames per second. Shall we begin? I always like to start in a certain order for a computer system. It just helps me to make sure that I have everything at hand that I need to build a computer. This process has served me well for many, many times. And normally we will start with the heart of the computer, the processor. Motherboard. RAM, hard drive, DVD drive, video card or video cards, power supply, cooling system, and of course we also have a case, but we will not be talking about the case today. So when one person would like to build one what would be close to being the ultimate gaming system these are some of the items that one might choose so please bear in mind everybody has different ideas on what will be the best for them so this combination of parts has been chosen to be the best for the person that will be purchasing this computer system it will not be for me. So, let's begin. With a computer system, people will say, what is the most important part of a computer system? And someone might say the processor. Someone might say the video card. Someone might say, how much RAM do you have? But truth be told, the most important part of the computer is the power supply, because if the computer does not turn on, it is not a good computer. Am I correct? Mm. Second most important part is the motherboard. As everything connects to this part, as long as it is working, most other parts can be replaced to repair it. But when that thing fails, get a new computer. So, power supply, motherboard, most important parts in a computer. Everything else can be changed 
but a few years down the track when the motherboard fails, mm -mm. so power supply, motherboard, most important. Processors, mm. I only ever see one or two of those fail a year. RAM, uh, who cares about RAM? Okay, one of my favorite things, these ugly brown boxes. These ugly brown boxes have, let's open them up and start the unboxing process. One of my favorite items in a computer system, the solid state hard drive. They are by far the best thing you can put in a computer since sliced bread and Vegemite. So these are in OEM box. So inside here is the uh, rather plain looking solid state hard drives. So today we're going to go with the Intel solid state hard drives. I find the Intel solid state hard drives to be the easiest solid state hard drive to use. They are very compatible with many types of systems. They're quite quick. And most importantly, they're quite reliable and have a very low frame rate. So as we go through this unboxing video, we will be throwing all of the unused packaging in the box. So a solid state hard drive will usually hold Windows and programs. So we'll have one solid state as the operating system and programs drive. And we will have a second solid state just to store games on. So we've got a 240 gig Intel solid state and another 240 gig. And these are the 530 series. As I am recording this. The new 700 series solid state was released and it has a little bit extra performance, but I've chosen to stay with these solid states as they are reliable. I've used them many, many times before and I know that they work. So we shall put those aside. So the solid state hard drive is one of the best things that you can do to a computer system. And over here we have a Seagate 4 terabyte hard drive. And this will be used to store data, movies and other items on there. Please listen from my own experience. Do not trust these to store your data. These things fail all the time. Please make sure you back up your data because this is going to have quite a high chance to fail. Okay, so let's get to the heart of the computer, the solid state hard drive. So today we've chosen the i7-4930K. It is a 3.4 gigahertz, six core processor. And inside here we have a pretty picture of what I think is inside a processor. Does anybody ever read the user manual? Okay. So there is our socket 2011 i7 processor. So this is not the extreme processor, this is the one down from the extreme processor. So we have chosen this processor as a balance between price and performance. We wanted to put most of our money into the video cards. Okay, so the next item is Corsair 
vengeance memory. So we have chosen to stick with just standard 1600 megahertz memory to try and reduce the chance for failures. Generally, the higher spec memory that you go for, higher failure rate you get. So in this memory, we've tried to get something which is a balance between performance and reliability. And also we're going to match the red of the RAM with the red of the motherboard. So Corsair memory is generally considered quite high quality. Please bear in mind that nothing is perfect and even the most expensive item can fail. So generally I find the Corsair Vengeance memory to be quite good. So we've just gone for standard speed memory. This system is not going to be primarily overclocked. We want it to be a stable gaming system. And also uh, workstation style computer. We want it to A, turn on, and B, turn on for as long as possible. And this here is a OEM copy of Windows 8 Professional. Over here we have an LG DVD drive, Blu-ray burner. Um, these units aren't used very much, but you still need them occasionally. And over here we have a Molex to SATA power connector and a serial ATA cable, which neither of will we need. Okay, now let's get to the good parts. Okay, so we've chosen the ASUS Rampage 4. As you can see, quite nice packaging. So this isn't the extreme version. This is just below the extreme version. So once again, we're looking for a price first performance and also reliability. So there is the motherboard. So this isn't a review, it's more of a unboxing explanation of what type of computer we're going to build. So inside the motherboard box we have a number of different items. We have the important three-way SLI, two-way SLI, and I'm guessing this is the Crossfire adapters. I quite like this. Do not disturb sign to hang on your door. Backplate for the motherboard. User manual. Driver, driver disc, and they just kindly put a little sticker inside their CD packets, which very commonly when you open these up and put the CD in, go in with the CD and get stuck in the drive. I don't know why they do that. They have stickers to label your serial ATA cables. You have a ROG Connect manual and cable, which I believe ASUS has removed from their website. User manual, a bit of other stuff, who cares. Some type of mounting plate, which I'm not quite sure. 
Got a number of serial ATA cables. They provided uh, eight serial ATA cables. It would have been nice if they had a, you know, given us some coloured ones or some little bit fancy ones. But all aside, pretty standard packaging. Now what we have here is the power supply. So as I was saying, this is one of the more important parts. So from memory, this power supply is made by Delta or one of the other manufacturers. Basically, when you see a power supply, it says Corsair. It's never made by Corsair. It's usually made by another company. So, personally, I like the Seasonic made power supplies, but they don't make a power supply in this size. So, the Corsair AX series is a mixture of different manufacturer power supplies. So the Corsair power supplies are generally quite reliable. So inside power supply. Be some warranty guides and some links and the user manual. Power cable and the power supply has some type of connector that will connect it internally from the power supply to a USB header to allow you to monitor. voltages, temperatures, fan speeds, and the load of the power supply. So we've chosen the biggest Corsair power supply available, except for the 1500, which wasn't quite available at the time of this purchase. So that there is the power supply. Of course, sir, there's a little label here that says, please, if you notice the fan not spinning, do not be alarmed. That is just how the unit operates and will only spin once it gets to a certain temperature. Okay, so power supplies can generally have a number of different rails. And uh, in the past, they were going to multiple rails, and now they're moving towards a single combined rail. So this power supply has one 12 volt rail rated at 100 amps. And that's generally how you would measure a power supply for its suitability for gaming video cards. So it's a 1200 watt Corsair AX power supply. So most of the time I'll use Seasonic made Antec power supplies or Corsair power supplies. Again, I try and go for Seasonic, but there was none available. So you get a few uh, cable ties, which I think are pretty crap. Um, a couple other bits and pieces that we don't care about. But the box is good. Inside here, we have 
the mother load of modular power cables. Um, ATX power, SATA power. <laughs> Check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six, CPU power, seven. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's an odd number. So I have seven cables for video cards. Yep, seven cables for video cards. So you can plug in, I don't know how many video cards with all of that. And you get plenty of Molex, um, which we don't really want to use. Plenty of SATA. So generally what we'll be using is the main power, the 8-pin power. We'll be using four of these for the video cards. We'll be using two SATA power connectors for the hard drives and DVD drives. And that's pretty much all we're going to use in the build. Okay, so one more time, the heart of the computer, the power supply. No power, no turn on. Now we come to the magical moment. The video cards. So on this system, we've chosen two Titan video cards for high resolution frame rates at a 4K resolution and also for workstation needs. So just a brief explanation on the choice of brands. We've chosen the ASUS brand as we find them to be uh, quite good in reliability and performance is always there. So just remember this computer is designed to be a reliable gaming system. Not the ultimate in performance but just out of the box. Solid performance. So here we have one Titan Black. Kickass video card. So you should always be careful how you handle electronics. Static electricity does kill these types of items. And we have one more. Asus Titan Black video card with 6 gig of RAM. So this computer system is going to have 12 gigs of video card RAM. Oh, can't believe it. That's a lot of RAM for a computer. Let alone the video card.
remember this one in the packaging. So again, one more Titan black 6 gigabyte video card. And we come to the last object. Is the water cooling kit. So we've gone with the Corsair water cooling kit because we've gone for a Corsair case. So this unit is a H. 110 water cooling kit. It has 240 mil fans in it. So we have the all important radiator and water cooling kit. So the radiator it has support for 240mm fans. So we're going to keep that all nice and neat and tidy. Over here we have the 240mm fans, which are a little bit noisy, but they're going to be okay. And here we have all of the mounting and retention mechanisms used to secure it to the computer. So I've already built one of these systems, so I'm quite familiar with all of these parts already. And this water cooling kit went together very well and I was quite happy with it. So overall, these are the parts used to build a over-the-top kick-ass gaming system. So I will provide a link down below which shows the creation of this monster gaming computer just so you can see how a professional build and install is done using all of this hardware. Thank you very much for watching this unboxing and explanation to build one hell of a gaming computer system.